welcome. This is a chair yoga lunch break. So well, thanks for joining me. Um, you might not be doing this at lunch. You could be doing it any time of day. It's just a 30 minute class to give ourselves a chance to kind of take a little moment to get present <laughs> and breathe and relax, stretch a few muscles. So if you are an op somebody who works, you know, over a computer or you, uh, who knows, like, you can be a dentist. <laughs> Little tiny spaces, little movements kind of make the body a little stiff and tight and a little sore. And so this is a great little break for that. And if yoga, um, like getting down on the floor is really tricky or anything like that, this is also a great yoga practice for you. So we're gonna start in a seated position. Now my um, chair here is um, just a dining room chair and it's a little bit tall for me. So my feet don't quite touch the floor if I'm all the way back. So I sit slightly forward. Um, the, from the back of the chair, but if your chair is such that you can easily rest your feet on the floor, or if your body is such that you could easily rest your feet on the floor and lean back into the chair, that's also fine. Just find your way into a place that feels like you're mostly a stable, in a stable seated position. I like to rest my palms generally on the thighs. You can also rest your hands face up or in another position. And then get the head so that it feels like your neck is um, in a neutral position, the shin's not tucked or lifted, just a neutral, shoulders relaxed as best you can. We'll take a few deep breaths here. Relax around the mouth, but breathe in and out through your nose if you can. If you can't breathe that way, breathe any way that's appropriate. Let your mind settle with this act of breathing. Notice where the breath travels. Can you feel the breath in the fingertips or even in the toes? chin fall so the back of the neck gets a little longer try not to lean forward there's a tendency sometimes to go with the head and then we're going to roll the head up and over the shoulder now if for whatever reason this rolling motion is in is uh, problematic for you you can instead well you can shorten the movement or you can simply put your head into sort of each of these little neck positions and pause for a beat with each one rather than a steady motion right on so you can choose a little bit of your own ideas there so we're just rolling the head back and forth Okay, so when you're even on both sides, we're gonna come back to the center. And then let your head float up. So we're gonna do a little stretch for the front of each side and then the back of each side. So to do the front, we're gonna let the head sort of fall so that the chin goes up at a diagonal away from the shoulder. And then we're gonna let the arm sort of hang. So I'm gonna to try to stretch. Essentially, there's a muscle that lives from here up to the back of the skull, and I'm just gonna let that muscle lengthen. These, this muscle acts to stabilize the skull on the spine. So put the right hand back, let your head kind of float into neutral. You might even notice a difference. And then we're gonna do the opposite side. So I'm gonna let this arm dangle, and I'm essentially gonna stretch right along that pathway on the other side. If there's more symmetry to the way it feels in your neck. Now we're going to try to get a, a muscle that goes from the skull to the shoulder blade. So we're going to let the head fall forward and 
and then reach back a little bit and draw the shoulder blade down. So we're sort of going over to the side, a little bit at a diagonal away from that shoulder blade tip. That one feels good. All right, so bring it back to the center. See if you notice a difference. And then I'm gonna do the other side. So I'm gonna find that space. nicely. Now we'll do the shoulders. We're going to go up around and back a bunch. Okay, now go forward and pull your shoulder blades together. Forward, pull together. You can make it more like a circle, but if you just get those two motions down, we'll be in good shape. All right, so take your right arm, give it a little shake. And then we're gonna make nice big circles with the right arm. As big a circle as your range of motion allows for. One more, go in that direction, then sweep it the other way. shake out. Let's do the other side. Three go in one direction. Three go in the other direction. All right, give that one a little shake out. Now we're going to take the arms up like this. We're going to make teeny tiny little circles to see if we can get the top of the shoulder nice and toasty. Go the other direction. Ooh, can you feel that on the top of your shoulder? <laughs> Two more. All right, let it go. All right, so we're going to take the wrists and circle them. Oh, this feels nice. Ooh. And then circle them the other way. Okay, spread your fingers out as wide as you can go. And then curl them in nice and tight. Spread them out nice and wide. Curl them in nice and tight. Spread them out nice and wide. Curl them in nice and tight. Beautiful. Lace your fingers together. We're going to do a really loose kind of wave pattern. Now, don't think about this too much, but switch the direction. <laughs> if you can. A little loose wave pattern. Oh, feels good. All right. Stop on one side. Now, I'm going to pull my hand back. You can do this any direction you like. I like to stretch out through the arm so I can really get the forearm muscles. And I'm pulling my thumb back at the same time. Good. And then let the hand drop and kind of stretch the top of the arm. Sometimes for me, this one works better if I bend the elbow a little bit. So there are muscles on the forearm here that control the movement in the thumb, and then there's some other ones around. If you move each finger, you'll kind of find the different muscles in your forearm that help keep your fingers moving. I find the thumb is the trickiest because of the way it wraps around our phones or tablets or around the mouse. So if you get tension in your thumb, it may or may not be arthritis. There may actually be a little bit of tension in these muscles in the forearm, and so giving the thumb a chance to kind of move backward and maybe even giving some massage to that can be really useful. Okay, let's do the other side. So feeling the stretch in the wrist, and again, for me, it helps to have the arm straight to do this version, and then stretch the thumb back. And then stretch to the top of the wrist, and again, it helps to bend my elbow a little bit, because it gets the, these muscles on the top part a little bit better. All right, give your wrist a little rub. So we're gonna move the rib cage a little side to side. We're just gonna to try to do a little side to side movement with the ribs. So the shoulders are gonna go along because they're attached. 
but I'm not gonna do that. That's a shoulder movement, right? So I just want to do the ribs. The shoulders just follow in line. And then we're gonna try going forward and back through the ribs. And this is gonna turn into our cat cow in just a second. But right now, just a little more of an isolation, just to see if there's tension in the middle of our back that we might be able to access and release. Okay, so we're gonna let this get bigger. So we're gonna tilt the pelvis forward and then open up the chest, pull the arm bones back a little bit. Exhale, round through your back, draw your navel in, curl the pelvis so that you make a rounder shape in your back. And these are our little cat cats and cobras or cats and cows, depending on how you want to think about the animals. One more time like that. All right, so we're gonna sit up nice and tall. And we're gonna take the legs slightly wider, so I'm sliding a little bit more towards the edge of my chair. Just make sure your chair is sturdy and you've got a nice base. So we're gonna start with a little washing machine. Now this is a twist, okay? So again, I'm moving the rib cage, and this gets my abdominal muscles working. So not the shoulders, but the ribs sides of the waist are activating to do this. Good, so we're gonna pause, so pick a side, sit down a little deeper, get a little taller, see if there's a little more room to spin around. You might rest a hand on the outside or the inside or grab the chair behind you. Keep the neck long and the spine tall. You don't have to turn your head more than it wants to go. Take one more big breath, and we'll let it go. Go back to a little bit of washing machine, really tiny, not too big a pattern, just to let the spine sort of rinse. The fluid to move back where it goes. When we twist, the discs change, and so the fluid in the discs shifts around a little bit. And so oh, we'll twist the other way, and you may find that when you first twist, it doesn't want to go as far. And then pause, sit down, get taller, see if there's a little more room to reach around. Take a nice big breath, and then we're gonna whoo, let that one go. Now, give yourself a little bit of movement until it feels like your spine mostly settles into place. We're gonna keep the legs nice and wide, and we're gonna do this little movement back and forth. So we're side bending, side bend. Oh, it feels so good. Now we're gonna, instead of pausing with the side bend in a neutral way, although you can do that, and I'll show you that in just a second, we're gonna go into a side angle pose though, if it's okay. So you could, you could put an elbow here and just stay right there and, and hang out with that shape. Or you can kind of spin this around a little bit, straighten out the other leg, and then oh, turn that into your side bending side angle pose. <laughs> so we're stretching over and then a little bit up over and a little bit up so we've got a nice side angle going here and it just depends on what's right for your body it's okay to do it in any direction anyway so we come up bring that leg back come back around to the center Ooh, take a moment to notice the difference <laughs> oh, feels nice all right so we're gonna do this guy Ooh, back And we'll pause here and again you might just stay with that movement or allow yourself to sort of turn the pelvis a little bit so you can get into this longer leg position and stretch and so we'll just let it arch and then lift it up a little bit let it arch lift it up a little bit and feel this out with your back how much arching is right for you it's a really it's not a big movement for it to get really interesting to notice Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Hold steady, big stretch. Oh, and then we're gonna come back up. Bring this whole thing around. Give yourself a moment. And just notice where we've gotten so far. So we've been doing all kinds of work so far. We've gotten all the way down to the, the legs, the spine. A little bit of hips, but we're gonna take it one more step into the hips. So we're gonna do a little rock the baby. So I'm coming forward. Now, if you have, you know, tight, sore knees, tight hips, whatever it might be, you can just rock back and forth like this with your leg bone, okay? You can even do both of them at the same time if you want to. Or you can, if it's available, pick up your leg and give it a little rock back and forth like this. I've got my foot flexed and holding onto my thigh bone and my foot, so I, my knee is stabilized. And then we're gonna test out, can I put this leg up on top? Now, for some of us, this is gonna cause a little bit of trouble for the knee, so if it does, it's too tight. Take your leg down and cross it over the top of the ankle joint instead of over the top of the thigh. And then notice, like if you sit up tall and even lean back slightly, do you feel a stretch somewhere in this outer part of your hip? Could be anywhere, right? Anywhere in this outer section. If you feel something, you're there. Don't go anywhere, <laughs> stay right there. If there's nothing going on, lean your pelvis forward a little bit, see if that changes things. And again, you can keep the foot flex to help secure this knee, um, these two lower leg bones in the relationship between this guy and those guys. So it keeps the knee more stable. Less likely to twist about. All right, Use that leg, give it a little movement. You have it already. And then notice the two legs. I like to see if I, what I did was good for me, right? So check in and see, like if, if there's any soreness, then you definitely don't wanna do it exactly that way on the other side feels pretty good, then you can go back. So you can just do this movement or pick the leg all the way up and do this movement. And then we're gonna settle it in. Sit up nice and tall. You might fold forward a bit. If it feels okay, you can spin your foot in circles, get your ankle joint involved. breaths. All right, yogis, we're going to let that leg go, give it a little movement. All right, now, we're going to take the legs out kind of wide, so I'm sliding back just a little bit, and we're going to fold forward. So we'll fold into this wider space. You could even, potentially, take your elbows to your legs or even take your hands to the ground if it feels like you can work with the chair and the width there, okay? So if it feels okay to go all the way lower, that's fine. Lengthen through your spine. Sometimes it feels nice to let the head kind of hang and release the back of the neck a little bit. around and we're gonna to come to um, a standing position now if your chair is like mine where the back of it is quite tall you're maybe gonna to want to use the base of the chair but if your chair is a little shorter you can use the back of the chair you just might want to turn it sideways so we're gonna come up and do a little downward facing dog so I'm gonna to walk to the side put my hands again I'm gonna use the base you could turn your chair around and use the back if that's better and then stretch your hips back we're going to see if we can get a little bit of a stretch here. Let me push my chair a little bit forward so I stay inside this frame. We're going to see if we can get a little bit of stretch in the backs of the legs here. You might feel that or you might not, but hopefully there's something happening for you. I love downward dog on the chair. <laughs> I think it feels amazing. Now 
we're going to do a little bit of balance work. We're going to have one leg and one arm. So I'm going to put one hand on the base of the chair like that, and the other arm I'm going to lift. So I'm going to take my left leg back behind me and my right arm out. Stretch between those two. Good. Reach a little longer. This is also some good core work here, trying to hold this steady. You can hug in through the sides of your waist a little bit more. Nice. Put your arm down, bring your leg down. Pause for a moment. Walk back into downward dog. And then we're going to come forward. Now I'm going to use this end of my chair, just because I like having kind of a sturdy place to put my hand down. So the right leg's going to go up, and my left arm's going to go up. Nice long stretch between those two points. And again, you can draw your navel in a little bit, try to get more stable in your core. This knee can be bent. Reach between those two points. Nice. Bring the arms down, bring the leg down. Walk back downward dog one more time. Oh. All right, so then we're going to use the chair to help us get started with some balance, okay? So once you're standing back up, you can stand beside the chair or you can face the chair. We're gonna take the weight into the right leg and bring the left leg into a tree. So you've got the chair here in case there's a little wobble. Um, you wanna catch with your leg, but we're starting out. So if we're starting out, we can hold on, then try to let go. And if you wobble and fall, put your foot down, okay? The chair's here, but it won't always be here. And we're trying to practice balancing. So we want to give ourselves that chance to practice balance as best we can. Okay, one more. And then bring that leg down. And you can pause for a moment, give everything a jiggle. <laughs> All right, let's do the other side. So we're going to stand on the left leg, the right leg's going to come into a tree shape. I'm using the chair to get myself started, and then I'm letting go and holding the balance. And again, you might fall, and when you fall, catch with your foot, okay? Use the chair to get yourself started, and then try to balance on your own, and catch without holding onto the chair if you can. Be mindful of your knee joint here. Be too pushy. <laughs> nice big breath. Beautiful. Bring your leg down. Give everything a little bit of a shake. All right, so now we're going to try a different balancing pose, and we'll use the chair maybe for the um, with one hand, all right? Maybe with both. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. So we're going to take weight to the right leg. Left leg's going to go up behind us, and we're going to see if we can create kind of a dancer shake. Now, some people can grab their foot, but don't worry too much about that. We're just going to try to lift that thigh without cramping up our hamstrings. And we might still hold the chair with one hand. Okay, bring that leg forward, put that guy down. We're going to shift the weight to the left leg. Bring the right leg back behind us, lift it up a bit. Keep your breastbone lifting if you can. Maybe let go of the chair. Maybe hold on. <laughs> nice, take one more breath. Excellent, bring your leg back down. Give yourself a little jiggle. Mm. Mm. Good. All right, yogis. So we're going to take a seat. And then we're just going to pause for a moment. And we'll do a little bit of um, work with our face. So first, just pause and notice your face. And notice if it feels like there's any tension around your jaw, or if everything feels pretty loose, just kind of notice the general way it feels right now. And then we're gonna do a very strange thing, but we're home by ourselves, no one's gonna see this. So <laughs> we're gonna stick out our tongue and open the eyes really wide and stretch out the face. And then you're gonna curl your face in, like it just tasted a really sour lemon. Okay, so lion, lemon, lion, Lemon. Try to get your tongue to stick out as far as it's willing to go. Lion. Lemon. Lion. Lemon. One more time. Lion. Lemon. 
Okay. Now, <laughs> I know it seems kind of silly, but a lot of um, times tension in the jaw, like um, TMJ and other kinds of jaw tension disorders, can actually be caused because the tongue muscles are actually really tight and the tongue doesn't rest in our mouth appropriately, so the jaw works to try to get the mouth to be appropriately aligned. So that's something you can consider. Now, I am not a doctor, so you should check with your medical professionals. But if that's something that you suffer from, you can certainly try that lion's face and see if that helps a little bit, um, along with any other therapies you're doing. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little face massage. So we're gonna use um, either the ring finger or the ring finger and the middle finger. I'm gonna use my ring finger. The ring finger is a little bit delicate, so it doesn't, it's not as pushy. Um, and you may not be as dexterous with that, don't worry about that. So we're gonna go up through the center of the, you know, like right where the eyebrows, um, right that center point, go up and go across your brow line. So up and across the brow line. Now right here above the eye um, brow are some little lymph nodes. And what we're trying to do is just give them a little massage. Okay, so then we're gonna brush up the bottom of the cheekbone. Again, there's little lymph nodes right in here under the cheekbone. So we're gonna brush up, again, using the ring finger if you can. It's a little less pushy, it's not quite as strong as your index finger. Okay. You might, if there's any feeling like there's a little bit of congestion there, you can give it a little massage right under your cheekbone and then just push it up again to the ear. All right, so now we're gonna, tr we're gonna essentially sweep. So we're gonna use a couple of fingers. I'm gonna use my ring finger and my middle finger and we're gonna make a little sweeping motion, okay? So we're gonna sweep down the face, right in front of the ear, all the way down past the jawline to the collarbones. And this just helps get lymphatic fluid moving in the face. And in some cases, it might even <laughs> help the face feel a little bit more hydrated, like a little bit lifted, like we might feel like we've had a little miniature facelift. <laughs> who, who doesn't want one of those? All right, so now we're gonna tap on the collarbones and tap right in the middle of the breastbone, just like that. Okay, now we're gonna do a really gentle massage at the back of the neck. So there's a bone right here called the occiput that's on either side of your skull. And just beneath that bone, we're gonna massage like this. We're gonna go towards the center and back, towards the center and back. So I'm gonna go onto the right side. And again, this is delicate, just as delicate as when we were working with the face. Across and back, it's just trying to move the skin. Across and back, across and back, across and back. Do it on the other side, across and back, across and back. We're just moving the skin in this area. Now, all of these things that we're doing right now are to help stimulate a relaxation response in our nervous system. So there are nerves that come out of our cranium <laughs> right here at the back of the neck. Some of those nerves control facial feature, facial uh, muscle um, like expression. Some control the eyes. Some control our mouth. And so when we do these kinds of things with our face, we're actually helping to stimulate and um, work with those nerves that are also responsible for helping us relax. Get your palms really warm. And then we're going to do one more thing to relax our eyes. You're going to make a little cup. You're going to put those little cups over your eyes and just let your eye muscles relax. Imagine the um, socket of your eye getting deeper and your eyeball itself moving backwards into those deeper sockets. And then make your eyes a little kinder. Bring a little kindness to your eyes. And yogis, that's our chair yoga class for today. So hopefully you've had a nice little chair lunch break. And I will take, let's take a big breath together. Let go with a big sigh. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Namaste, greetings to the rest of your day.